Welcome friends to another Expanse video. This is an attempt to thread together everything we know about the Ring Builders history, barring events in the last few books. This is speculative and based on my own thoughts and the opinions of others that make sense to me. Just wanted to be upfront about that. You disagree with something? Not a bother. Let your voice be known in the comments. So the Ring Builders started as an aquatic species and they evolved in the ocean of a gas giant a Europa-like moon. Due to the effects of the ocean, they had a very slow metabolism, which is the chemical reactions in the body's cells that converts food into energy. And so over time, they were evolved by this environment, so they were capable of stealing genetics from the other organisms they share the ocean with. In this case, organisms who lived around hydrothermal vents. From them, they gained the ability to create photoreceptive organs, which is sight they did not have before, and also to see bioluminescence, which is the production and emission of light by a living organism. At this stage, they're able to see each other and talk. The individual gate builder jellyfish began to function as a neuron, which are a collective of the units of the brain and nervous system. So I equate this to a single giant mind or brain, and each neuron communicated with the others through light, so they became an ocean-wide hive mind, a leviathan. With this mind, they then broke through the icy crust of the moon and into the unknown beyond to colonise the vacuum surface. Their moon had low gravity from which they were able to break free, and they became free-floating organisms, but still retained their developed abilities, transmitting info via light and functioning as a hive mind, so they can communicate at this stage over large distances. Evolution then played a hand again. The transport of light between the nodes would limit the continued existence of this organism and how far it can evolve and grow. So that pressure evolved them to allow a way to move through space faster, i.e. not limited by the speed of light. So they evolved and via their own form created the inertia manipulation technology and the ring gates. So the ring gates are then used to transmit information and consciousness via light, but over greater distances than they could do by themselves. The protomolecule and the gates, the ring station, the ruins standing on worlds like Illus 4 can be considered a part of them. At some point after this, they began to actually make technology rather than evolving it. If you think of something like the Adro Diamond or Library, for example, which is around the size of Jupiter, with a perfectly smooth surface and acts as a data storage system. Perhaps this was as a means to preserve their knowledge in the threat of the Goths or Dark Gods. It seems to me that around this time they would begin using the drones as well. They also may have built the shipyards and weapons around Laconia as a response to the threat of the Dark Gods and set a trap in the Tacoma star system where a neutron star is on the verge of collapse. And the space around it was kept artificially clean. This is shown through the lack of orbiting planets, planetoids, asteroids, or even going down the scale, micrometers or loose protons. The trap snapped shut when the Laconians used it to test weapons against the dark gods. They used the Tacoma system, and which caused the star to collapse into a black hole. The Laconian weapons, of course, had been based on the Ring Builder technology. If true, the creation of the trap shows a stellar level of engineering and could perhaps have been done for them by the proto-molecule. The molecule itself very much follows their initial species developments of using others to help themselves, i.e. they are taking genetic traits from the species near the hot vents and the proto-molecule uses people and materials to make what is required or to infect others and use their biomass. I would say from Illus 4 that the ring builders used each planet for a particular focused purpose, such as extracting metals there, which can be heated up via the machines put there and cooled down via the ocean, a giant automated factory made of the planet. Laconia was used to build and repair things and as transport to other worlds, the warships likely to fight the dark gods in some way, shown by the reaction in the Tacona system, which we touched on before. The hive consciousness, along with the light seeing, has somehow allowed them to see the unknown aggressor's realm, 
where, with their great mind, the ring builders got their fingernails into the cracks between those two universes that allows them to engineer the ability to extract energy like they used the vents deep in the ocean earlier in their evolution. The ring station lets them push into that universe to create the ring space and bubble blown into those cracks, which lets them gain relatively unlimited free energy. So, the slow zone is a bubble of space created from a brain between universes. That's brain, B-R-A-N-E, I'll give an explanation for that in a moment, surrounded by the second universe with connections, holes in the spectrum, the wormhole gates to our universe. A brain is an extended object like the strings of string theory, but having any number of dimensions rather than the one dimension. That is what it, it, it is, though I don't understand most of the terminology myself. And one other point about the stations, etc. Why do these jellyfish need passages in places such as the ring station and the rings? The ring builders used automatons or drones which would be used in those passages. So we continue to see their parasitic approach, hijacking other life through their technology, in this case the dark gods, enhancing that power. I didn't cover the protomolecule much here, but will at some point in the future to give you the details there of its development and the mankind's understanding of it. Now friends, I turn this over to you. What are your thoughts? Let your voice sing out in the comments.